Hey, this is Henry Rotten. Hey, this is Marcus Sintafonte. It's Brad fucking Rush. This is Big Sexy Venom here. This is Kill OK. This is Killjoy. Hi, this is Tim Lee. Mike Damage. This is Doc Holliday. Yo, it's Barack Obama, and you're listening to the GBYWN Podcast. And welcome to the Global Backyard Wrestling Nation Podcast. As always, I am your host, Ryan Hazard, here with so much as I am sitting inside the GBYWN Podcast Sound Studio, my 1991 Ford Mustang, slightly sprinkled in snow right now because we are currently in the winter season. But even so, I will be giving you some great summer results from our GBYWN events, including Day 2 of the New York Extravaganza 4 and all of the big events from August of this year, 2014. All culminating in what will be the final part of our fantastic interview. If you've been listening from the very beginning, I know you've been enjoying it. Our interview with none other than the longest reigning GBYWN champion of the world, Murph. But before I get to all of that, folks, let me talk about my recent event as Ryan Rage and I went up to 203 BYW Descendancy 2014, a great event which hosted Benjamin Wright back capturing the 203 BYW Championship against Daniel Devine and Andrew Wright. A huge moment for BRB and all of the fans of BRB who've seen him climb the ladder, never quite reach the brass ring, and now he is the man in 203 BYW, the number one champion in Connecticut. Speaking of championships, Henry Rotten defended the GBYWN world title against the perfection, as well as so much more. Please check out 203 BYW Descendancy 2014, including myself and Ryan Rage invading 203 BYW, attacking numerous members of the roster and being told that we had one opportunity. We could have been kicked out numerous times by their president, Crazy Pete, but he knew we'd just keep coming in, so he gave us one ultimatum. If the Killing With Kindness movement of Rad Hazard and Ryan Rage were able to defeat Chris Rowe and Doc Holliday, we would be allowed to come back to 203 BYW anytime we wanted. Any member of the EWA could come back at any time they wanted, but if we were to lose to that Team 203 BYW, we were barred from the promotion as long as he decreed. And thus the match was on. In the match, I got to give a biohazard to Doc Holliday, as well as Ryan Rage spearing the hell out of both Chris Rowe and Doc Holliday for the victory. A fun match. I had such a blast teaming up with Ryan Rage, defending the honor of the WA after Connecticut attacked all of the members of the War Games at the Elite Tournament. This was retribution, folks, as the war continues between the Elite Wrestling Association and 203 BYW. Very excited to see where this goes in the future and into 2015. But first, folks, let's talk about 2014 and the GBYWN event recap. June 15, 2014, in New York. Hosted New Era, New York Extravaganza 4, Day 2. 
in the opening contest. The first semi-annual Come As You Are. G ground is lava. Catwalk is not lava. 20-man Battle Royal Open Invitational Cup Challenge. Saw Mercury victorious. Last eliminating Caden Talbain. The 3BW Championship was on the line as Tim Rush defeated Harrison Sage to capture the gold. A fatal four-way attraction saw Killjoy defeat The Perfection, Chris Craze, and Mad Ecstatic. Six-person tag team action as Tommy Coburn, Arida, and Killa K defeated California Wildfire, Nightmare Neil, and Jesla. A battle for bragging rights saw Team 3BW of Rick Johnson, Cameron Action, and The Mistress defeat Team 203BYW of Andrew Wright, Benjamin Wright Back, and Doc Holliday. A four-way bout saw Chuck Action defeat Chris Mula, Fruitwater Johnson, and Corey Diamond. Champions Clyde, as the GBYWN United States Tag Team Champions, the Flamboys of Adam Burnett and Andrew Sellers, defeat the GBYWN World Tag Team Champions, the Stepdads of Patrick Wade Wilson and the GBYWN United States Champion, the Ross. One on one, as Murph defeated Chris Ambrose. Singles competition as Drake Brailer defeated Tim Lee. Triple threat tag team action as the GBYWN World Pure Champion Mike Damage and Ian Finnegan defeated Brains and Brawn of Robbie Roberts and Sean O'Mora and Crazy Time of Crazy Pete and Primetime. The Miss NYE match. Saw Jack Diesel defeat JD Static, Rad Hazard, Tommy Flambeau, Jimmy Spino, and Joey Tornado to be crowned Miss NYE. James Connolly successfully retained the GBYWN World X Division Championship over J2 Step, Matt DeMorris, and Brad Rush. With both World Championships on the line. It was Dix One International defending the I6 Dix Champion of Men Fighting and Grappling title against the GBYWN All Stars defending the GBYWN World Championship in an eight man tag. In the bout, Scott Henson, Caden Talbain, Champion Daniel Makabe. And Mercury defeated St. Vengeance, Eric Douglas, Champion Sam Jude, and Commendation Combat Kid when Scott Henson pinned Sam Jude to become the new GBYWN World Champion. And in your main event of the evening, Zane defeated Marcus Santofonte. August 2nd, 2014 in Connecticut. Saw 203BYW wrestle at M7 day one. In the opening contest, GBYWN World Tag Team Champion Daniel Devine defeated JD Static and Ryan Rage. The GBYWN World Tag Team Champion The Russ successfully defended the GBYWN United States title over St. Vengeance. Fatal 4-Way as Rad Hazard defeated P.J. Matthews, Gavin Nails, and Zagan. In what was billed as Triple R's final match, The Perfection defeated Triple R. A gauntlet saw Halo Brown successfully defend the GBYWN World X Division Championship over Scott Hughes, Drake Cannon, Sick Rick, Killa K, Onya, Eric Erickson, Bobby Johnson, Cliffy Central, James Connolly, James Hudson, the OCWS champion Big Sexy Venom, and Jay Keys. Triple Threat Action saw Ian Finnegan defeat Sean O'Mora and Benjamin right back. A six-man tag team bout saw Team 203 BYW of Chris Rowe, 
Knuckles, and Doc Holliday to defeat the Kokogen Wrecking Crew Deluxe of Marcus Centafonte, Crucible, Chris Ambrose, and the GBYWN World Pure Champion Mike Damage. And in your main event of the evening, a Bear Boards match saw Andrew Wright successfully defend the 203 BYW Championship over prime time. August 3rd, 2014 in the United Kingdom hosted RCWA Britfest 2014. The opening contest saw Downfall defeat the RCWA Tag Team Champions A4. One on one as Storm defeated Sam Jude in a straight fight. Tim Lee was able to defeat the RCWA Internet Television Champion Damian Black. R. Cowlett was able to defeat Johnny White, DVV, Dick Manwich, Matt Money, and Jonathan Royal in a Money in the Bank Tables match. Singles competition as Josh Wall defeated Rise Wood. The RCWA Heavyweight Champion Sean Wilson was able to defeat LVG, Ash Draven, and Will Ospreay. And in your main event of the evening, Will Ospreay defeated the RCWA Heavyweight Champion, Sean Wilson. August 3rd, 2014 in Connecticut, hosted 203 BYW WrestleMania 7, Day 2. In the opening contest, Primetime defeated Zagan. A fatal four-way bout saw Jay Keys defeat the perfection, Kevin Nails and the GBYWN World X Division Champion Halo Brown. A four-way elimination tag team bout saw the radical movement of Rad Hazard and the OCWS Champion Big Sexy Venom defeat the team of Bobby Johnson and Killa Kay, the nobility of Drake Cannon and Eric Erickson, and the seventh side of the apocalypse of Jake Hughes and Onya. The GBYWN World Tag Team Champion The Russ successfully defended the GBYWN United States Championship over Sick Rick. One on one as Crazy Pete defeated PJ Matthews. Singles competition as Chris Rowe defeated David Auburn. A fatal four-way match saw Sean O'Mora defeat J.D. Static, Knuckles, and James Connolly. And in your main event of the evening, Doc Holliday defeated St. Vengeance. August 16th, 2014 in New Jersey, hosted EWA Aftershock. The opening contest was an EWA Elite 5 Rankings match. As the number two rank, Romano Galano was able to defeat the number three rank, Tommy Cobran and DJ RJ. Thus, Galano retained his number two rank. In a number one contenders match for the EWA Championship, the Killing with Kindness movement of Joe Hall and Rad Hazard defeated 2XL of the number one rank, Ryan Rage and Joey Adams. Thus, Joe Hall was given his next opportunity at the EWA Championship as opposed to Ryan Rage. And in your main event of the evening, a proving ground match saw the EWA Champion Brandon the Bull defeat Maverick by way of disqualification. August 16th, 2014 in New Jersey, hosted OCWS Clash 9. A fatal four-way elimination bout saw Alpha Bitch defeat Awesome Dude, Sergio, and Saint Jobber. Singles competition as Kyle Black defeated JD Slayer. Sabotage successfully retained the OCWS Extreme Limits Championship over Infamous Kid. And in your main event of the evening, a six-man tag team bout saw Killa Kay, Jimmy Spano, and Kronos defeat the Saints of Truth, of Truth, Saint Vengeance, and Drix by way of disqualification. 
August 16, 2014 in Pennsylvania, posted 3BW Ultra Violence 2. An impromptu last man standing match, with the special referee being CJ Riot, saw Tim Rush successfully retain the 3BW Championship over Nightmare Neil. A submissions count anywhere match saw War and Peace defeat Lawrence and Eric Lightning. And I quit the company match saw Marcus Sendafonte defeat the Mistress. Triple threat action as Jonathan Andrews defeated Lewis Million and Danny Aftershock. A weapons match saw some guy named Dan defeat Josh Wesker and Nico Diamond. OC successfully retained the LXW Championship over Jay Risk, Dylan McQuinn, and Christian Storm. A handicap match saw Big Juicy defeat the team of Nate Dallas and Cameron Action. One-on-one -on -one as FX defeated Tommy Flambeau. Falls count anywhere as Nate Adams defeated the GBYWN United States Tag Team Champion. Andrew Sellers. The number one contendership to the 3BW United States Hardcore title is on the line as Spartan Kingdom defeated Chris Craze, Dina, and Jay Crypter. An elimination tables match saw DJ defeat Chris Blaze and J Rock. A two out of three falls match saw Ajax defeat the GBYWN United States Tag Team Champion Adam Barnett. A TLC War Games saw the Black Light District of the 3BW Champion California Wildfire, Matt Scars, Queen Joey, and John Luthien wrestle the force of Troy Allen, Jesla, and the 3BW United States Hardcore Champion RJB. During the bout, Matt Scars is able to climb the turnbuckle and capture the 3BW United States Hardcore Championship. Later on the bout, Troy Allen was able to grab one of the 3BW Tag Team titles. After that, RJB grabbed the other 3BW Tag Team title, thus making Troy Allen and RJB the new title holders. And to finish off the bout, Cody Mortem and CJ Riot were able to retain the ownership of 3BW. August 23rd, 2014 in Australia, hosted WZWA Frostbite 2014. The WZWA Tag Team Championship was on the line in a single elimination match as Ryan Tate and Blade Shaw were able to defeat Circus Royale of DK Joker and the franchise, Jake Wallace and Dynamo. Acid successfully retained the GBYWN Australian Championship over Steel Kemsley and Brandon Cage. One-on-one -on -one as Big Ace defeated Scream. Singles competition as Brian Lowe defeated Clint Marshall. Nick Ariel defended the unofficial WZWA Niagara Falls Championship over Mykonos. Three Dogs successfully retained the GBYWN World Hardcore Championship over Antilochus. A last man standing match saw Aston Crude defeat Mike Delcano. Alex Stone defeated Dan Zeppelin to become the new WZWA Champion. And in your main event of the evening, Three Stages of Hell saw Rex Regum versus Dark Ice in the first fall. Falls count anywhere as Dark Ice was victorious. The second fall being a no disqualification lumberjack match saw Rex Regum even up the score. And then in the finals, a 10 minute Iron Man match saw Rex Regum victorious 2 to 3 in overtime. Thus, Rex Regum wins the bout. August 26, 2014 in Pennsylvania, hosted BXW Damn You North Korea 6, Day 1. In the opening contest, the OCWS champion Big Sexy Venom defeated Matt DeMorest. A four-count match saw Henry Rotten 
wrestle Chris Frank to a double knockout. Rad Hazard defeated Mike Damage to become the new GBYWN World Pure Champion. An elimination bout saw Halo Brown successfully retain the GBYWN World X Division Championship over James Connolly and Safari Spino. Immediately after the bout, an impromptu match as Marcus Indofonte defeated Halo Brown to become the new GBYWN World X Division Champion. Champion versus Champion as the BXW Champion Johnny Boy defeated the BXW Inner Sea Champion Hybrid. Tag Team Action as the radical movement of Chris Urban and Drake Genocide defeated Dead Presence of Chris Mula and Killa K. Marcus Santafonte successfully retained the GBYWN World X Division Championship over St. Vengeance. And in your main event of the evening, a title for title unification bout saw the GBYWN United States Tag Team Champions of the Crew, Adam Burnett and Andrew Sellers, defeat the GBYWN World Tag Team Champions, the Stepdads of Daniel Devine and the GBYWN United States Champion, the Russ, Adam Bolt Burnett and Andrew Sellers, your new GBYWN Tag Team Champions of the World. August 27th, 2014 in Pennsylvania, Hosted BXW Damu North Korea 6, Day 2. In the opening contest, Safari Spino defeated Drake Genocide. A fatal four way bout saw Henry Rotten defeat Halo Brown, TKO, and Killa K. Tag team action as the stepdads of Daniel Devine and the GBYWN United States Champion The Russ wrestled the radical movement of the OCWS Champion Big Sexy Venom and the GBYWN World Pure Champion Rad Hazard to a double disqualification draw. One on one as Saint Vengeance defeated Chris Mula. Tag team action as the crew of the GBYWN World X Division Champion Marcus Sendafonte and the GBYWN World Tag Team Champion Adam Burnett defeated Nova Six of the BXW Inner City Champion Hybrid and James Connolly. A death match saw the GBYWN World Tag Team Champion Andrew Sellers defeat Mike Damage. And in your main event of the evening, a no disqualification match saw Chris Urban defeat Johnny Boy to become the new BXW Champion. August 29th. 2014 in British Columbia, Canada, hosted I Sucks Dicks, Big Dick Universe 3 in an I Sucks Dicks versus VCW ideology battle. Manimal Crossing of the GBYWN World Champion Scott Henson, Caden Talbane, and Lenny D defeated the VCW Originals of the I Suck Sticks Champion of Men Fighting and Grappling, Daniel Makabe, Yakuza J, and Drew Sarian. Tag Team Action as Igor and RTD defeated Hooded Cobra and Zaken. One on one as El Changeo Blanco defeated Draven Lawless. In the first round of the Tournament for Everything, Ryan Brody defeated Cole Crazy. The second bout in the first round of the tournament for everything saw Chris Frank defeat Nick Price. No disqualification in the first round of the tournament for everything saw Chris Goodwin defeat Zeus McFly. Another bout in the first round of the tournament for everything saw Drew Sarian defeat Omega. And in your main event of the evening, the final bout in the first round of the tournament for everything, saw Mercury defeat Yakuza J. August 30th, 2014 in Pennsylvania, hosted Revival, just another Midwest Super Show, day one. At the beginning of the show, Sick Rick stripped Mike Damage of the Revival Championship, giving it to himself and announcing it as a 24-7 title. Thus, the opening of the show saw Chongo 
defeat Sick Rick to become the new Revival Champion. After this, Beast Snow would defeat Chungo to become the new Revival title holder. During that match, Killa K would then defeat Chungo in singles competition. Rad Hazard successfully defended the GBYWN World Pure Championship over FX. The Revival title was on the line as Henry Rotten defeated Beast Snow. But soon after, Drake Genocide defeated Henry Rotten to become the new Revival Champion. Triple Threat Action as the OCWS Champion Big Sexy Venom defeated Henry Rotten and Tony Deppin. With special guest referee B Snow. B Snow defeated Drake Genocide to become the new Revival Champion. During that same match, with special guest referee B Snow, Drake Genocide defeated Sick Rick by disqualification. One on one, as B Snow successfully retained the Revival Championship over Johnny Boy. But soon after, Devin Bliss would pin B Snow to become the new Revival Champion. And in your main event of the evening, Devin Bliss successfully retained the Revival Championship over St. Vengeance. August 30th, 2014 in British Columbia, Canada. Saw I Sucks Dicks Big Dick Universe 3 in the opening contest. The Tournament for Everything Semifinals. Saw Caden Talbane successfully retain the VCW Triple Crown Championship over Chris Goodwin. Another semifinals bout in a tournament for everything. Saw Drew Syrian defeat Scott Henson to become the new GBYWN World Champion. The tournament for everything semifinals raged on as Mercury defeated Chris Frank. The semifinals continued for the tournament for everything. As the I Sucks Dicks champion of men fighting and grappling, Daniel Maccabe successfully retained the title over Ryan Brody. Triple threat action as Punk Rock defeated Zaken and RTD. Tag team action as Zeus McFly, Hooded Cobra, and Cole Crazy defeated Igor, Nick Price, and Draven Lawless. One on one as Mr. Black defeated Pooter. Singles competition as El Chijo Blanco defeated Yakuza J. And an elimination four way dance in the finals of the tournament for everything. Saw Mercury defeat Caden Talbane, Drew Syrian, and Daniel McCauley to become the new VCW Triple Crown Champion. I suck sticks, champion of men fighting and grappling, and GBYWN world champion. Immediately after the bout, an impromptu match took place as Mercury defended all three titles against Scott Henson, retaining the VCW Triple Crown, the I suck sticks, championship of men fighting and grappling, and GBYWN world title. August 31st, 2014 in Pennsylvania, hosted Revival, just another Midwest Super Show Day 2. In the opening contest, Chungo defeated St. Vengeance. One-on-one -on -one as Henry Rotten defeated Drix. OCWS champion Big Sexy Venom defeated Devin Bliss to win the Revival Championship. Immediately after... The OCWS Champion Big Sexy Venom retained the Revival Championship over the BXW Inner City Champion Hybrid. But Phoenix was able to defeat the OCWS Champion Big Sexy Venom to become the new Revival title holder, only to lose the title to Hack Edgeman who pinned Phoenix to become the Revival Champion. But immediately after, Killa K defeated Hack Edgeman to become Revival Champion. And in a triple threat bout, where Killa K had to be pinned to lose the title, James Connolly pinned the GBYWN World Pure Champion Rad Hazard and Killa K in the Revival title bout. Thus, Killa K retained the championship. Until Sick Rick was able to pin Killa K, thus Sick Rick becoming Revival Champion for the main event of the evening. 
as Beast Snow defeated Devin Bliss and Sick Rick to become the Revival Champion. I got the biggest boner for science. Bill, 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 the science guy. And there you have it, folks. That is your results for August of 2014. A huge month for the global backyard wrestling nation. A lot of matches, a lot of gimmick matches. Something about the summer and August in particular being a hardcore month in backyard wrestling. Seriously, over the years, if you look back, something about that month just brings out the hardcore attitude in people. Maybe it's that heat. I don't know. But either way, let's talk about other things in the past, as in the longest reigning Global Backyard Wrestling Nation champion of the world. Let's do this. The final part of our interview with none other than the man himself, Murph. back at wrestling is I have first and foremost tried to take the I guess you could say Chris Jericho pros approach of figuring out what is my character what is his motivations what does he want Where and is he what going? really is the three-headed credential exactly like what does my character want? Does he want the title above all else? Does he just want simple fan recognition? Does he want to be the best above all else? Does he want bragging rights above titles? I try to focus that into my character. And that's what I try to do. And if it succeeded, then it succeeded. I've tried my best in 203 BYW to do that. I mean, I had the borderline, people have told me, borderline impossible tra task of turning Doc Holliday into a face after he was the biggest heel in the entire company. And I walked in and fucking shit on the entire Fed and him and fucking went personal on his family to become the biggest heel in the company after being gone for a year. Like, that's what I want to do. I want to make a memorable character. It's a lovely thing. I, I mean, I, I love and respect the fact that Dan and Matt, and you can credit this to, be, to 15 Beer Murph, or you can not, but like, as much as people want to not talk about the credibility of titles in BYW, I will go on the record of saying... The GBYWN championships are what matter. You'd hope so. In this business. Or hobby. Hobby. As you will hobby say. That's the best way to put it. There needs to be some sort of structure in backyard wrestling. And I will never forget the people who have stuck their neck out. If it wasn't for Matt and Ryan. I wouldn't be G JWA champion. It would have been Ness. And I love Ness as a person. Ness is a not good wrestler. I am a better wrestler than Ness. Let Ness get pissed off at me. Let him take swings at me. I am a better wrestler than Ness in all aspects of the game when you can like consume everything together. I am thankful for Matt and Ryan for recognizing that. I am forever thankful for Don for seeing that in me and taking me in as a Marcus Centafonte guy and pushing me to the GBYWM World Championship. And I will forever thank you, Dan, Rad, for acknowledging that and acknowledging that I am good at what I do and wanting to integrate that into the BBW 
unification title storyline. And, you know, as much as I feel like I have an ego, I always want to pay it back. When I came back in my return match, I always had the idea that I was going to give the victory to Jed. Because I beat Jed at NY at No Wars 4. And he deserved that win over me because of what he gave of his body to have me beat him. So Matt deserved what he did to me to let me elevate myself to win the championship from me to elevate himself. I am always about reciprocation in this community. And so I hope that's what I'm remembered for. The fact that not only did I, like, you know, push myself to be the best, but that I recognize those who are of equal ability or better of and putting those people before myself. And I hope that future generations of wrestlers, I know this is a community, not a profession. I wrestle, I, not wrestle, I work for the biggest of big leagues now. I hope those who come after me recognize that. You always have to think for the future. It's not about you. It's about the future of the hobby. Make sure you train those who come after you. Don't worry about yourself. Your legacy is cemented. Make sure that it survives beyond you. And that's all that I hope for. And I hope that I did a good job doing that. Alright. Well, would you like to talk about your final uh, year in Backyard Wrestling? 2013? 2013? Yeah. Is there a speech round we need to do? A speech? Speed? Right. Yeah, well, you've got some names between two of us. I don't think so. I mean, 2013, I think, was actually one of my best years. I mean, fucking New Era happened. New Era got revived in 2013. And Don had enough fucking faith in me. Don came to me in late 2012 to tell me about New Era being revived. I told, New, I told Don what I wanted part of the Northeast to be in 2013. I told him I wanted... Because as much as people fucking hate on me, because, you know, in DCW I was pegged to be the guy. In DCW I was pegged to be the guy. In JW I got the championship, in GYW I got the championship. People fucking you hated me for being the guy. I mean, Matt, I mean, um, fucking Will Xavier. Will, I love you to death, but I know you fucking shot on me for, not be, for being the guy and not defending enough. But yeah, I've always been... I've always been the guy to where, like, even if I'm not the guy, I look to the people in front of me who have the potential. And when New Era started, the first thing I said to Don when he proposed New Era, I'm like, Ben's going over me. Ben has more life in backyard wrestling than I do. Ben's been working his ass off, and I've been kayfabe. Treating like I am the head of the group. Oh. It only makes sense in kayfabe laws for Ben to revolt against me and go over me to further his career and to bury me and send me off into the sunset. Ben needs to go over me. I made that point across to Don. Don made sure that happened come in Y3. That was... Honestly, I hated myself. As much as people like to give me shit for going over as the JB, GB, uh, JWA and GBYWN champion, I fucking hated going over people. Once I lost that title, all I wanted to do was job to people who I felt deserved that moment in the spotlight. That's why I lost to Robbie. That's why I lost to Ben. People deserve that push. My time is over. I have a good job. I'm financially secure. I'm winding down. Move people up who deserve it. I don't fucking deserve that rub. Don has given me that rub. The New Era guys, you, Dan, you, Russ, you guys have given me that rub. I don't fucking deserve it anymore. I don't have any stroke. Huh? 
I don't have a stroke. I don't. I don't deserve the stroke anymore. I've gotten that stroke. I had the G1 like, championship. I don't have it. Like there's no stroke for me to give. Like there's no way of me putting you over. But I've only thought that you're over. You know what I mean? Like it's strange to say, but for you to hear maybe. But Murph, you've always been over. That's all there is to it. Like, uh, uh, it's hard for me to describe so I'm almost not sure if I'm in love for her. I mean, I am, but at the same time, it's like, mm. <laughs> I mean, I've been over enough, but, like, as much as, like, kayfabe, I try to embellish my accomplishments. Because that's my role as a heel. To play up my accomplishments. But if you ever meet me in real life, as you guys both know, mm. I am the humblest motherfucker of all time. I don't feel like I deserve anything. Make I your back right. make you fucking humble. Exactly. I don't feel like I deserve anything I've done. And... That's your problem. Why? Because you don't believe that you deserve anything. I've paid my dues, but it's a hobby. Yeah, but you just said it right there. <laughs> you paid your dues, but you don't believe that you did. At the same time, like, you just flat out said it, like, right there. Like, it's more of a, all right, dude, this whole community showed you that you're worthy of holding the world championship for fucking 400 and what? 30 days? 40? 20, 30 something days. Exactly. Just got Bo Leaf. <laughs> Bo Leaf. Uh, Dan, Dan's, I mean, Dan was involved in the storyline. Dan's oh. the one who could truly oh. interject at this point. Oh, don't you mean Rad? No. Rad. Rad could truly interject at this well, point. That's my point, like, um, I mean, that entire summer... I, I know was, all about the goddamn summer. That entire summer, I was of the point to where if I don't have a match of the year candidate every single match that I go out as the GBO IWA Championship, I'm a failure. Why do you think I was very annoyed that we didn't have a singles throughout the time? Huh? I said, why do you think I was very annoyed that we did not have a singles throughout the time? Why? Because we would have fucking killed it. We would have. Throw out your fucking title reign. I would have been no problem fucking jumping out to anybody, which I have always had a fucking point for. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, you did get to wrestle prime time. I did. Let's hear about that storyline and how it built up. Wait a minute, weren't you concussed at some point? I was concussed, thanks to Ian. I didn't believe so at the time, but I had a triple threat match with Ian and Sky at the time. Uh, and Ian gave me a John Woo kick, uh, which I was in, intending to bump on my lower back. <laughs> but yeah, Ian didn't kick me as hard as I thought he was going to, or I didn't sell as hard as I was going to. And I landed straight on the back of my head. Mm -hmm. I saw nothing but yellow for about a tenth or a quarter of a second. A funny thing about that story... Ian came up to me to pick me up for the next spot. I had to tell Ian what the next spot was for him to remember. I told Ian, get the chair. I have to reverse this so that way I hit you with my finisher on the chair. He was like, all right. He went and got the chair. I reversed him, hit him with the chair on my finisher, pinned him, match was over. That was probably my first, if not second, concussion on wrestling. I don't have any officially documented conf confirmations of concussions, I just know I've had them. Based on the research that's been done in recent, recent years, I know I've had concussions in backyard wrestling. I just have not like looked for medical attention. I've seen at least two of them. Those concussions. Easily. There's at least one point that I remember you were just dead on your feet, but you still were fucking talking, and I was like, this motherfucker is dead, like, I don't remember who the, like, it involved a chair, you took a fucking shot, shot to your head, and you're just like, 
Was it against uh, Froggy last year? Yes. <laughs> when I decided to take two punts to the head? Yeah. Yeah. I am all about preserving my own safety. Kind of. But if it makes sense in kayfabe, I will let that person murder me. That is why I let Jason kick me in the head twice in a row. <laughs> it kayfabe make, made sense for the story that I was trying to get across. I didn't care about my own personal safety. I knew it was GBYW champion against former GBYW champion. So I should not kick out. I should not sit for a three on one punt. Which meant I had to prepare myself to get kicked in the head as hard as possible from Froggy. And as terrified as I was from Froggy kicking me in the head, I knew my responsibility. I knew I had to take it twice. And I just accepted it. That was my role. That's what I had to do. And I took it like a man. Murph, I'm going to be extremely candid, but I feel like I'm listening to somebody recall to kill the Viking bird right now. <laughs> It's like, motherfucker, I take it. I did. It is probably one of the better thoughts that I that's, that's what I had to do. Don wanted Froggy to go over to establish Brandon Bronze. Really? Yeah. And, like, the plan was different. Like, Ben was supposed to help me, I believe, and shit, but... Believed. I mean, you're talking former GBYWN champion against former GBYWN champion. One single punt to the head you should not me? do me in. Yes. Psychology-wise, uh, if I am a true champion, it doesn't make sense for me to go down on a single punt. Right. And I have feared, flat-out fucking been terrified about Froggy's punt since he concussed Zeke in 2009 and No Remorse 4. But when the time fucking came, I knew it was at stake. I knew what Froggy could do. I trusted Froggy. I let him run the risk of concussing me twice for the sake of an NYE storyline. Because that was what best for the NYE storylines. It was what was best for Froggy as a character. It was what was best for me as a character. It made the most sense. I knew I would hopefully recover from whatever head trauma would Fro Froggy would give me. I went with it. I trusted Don and Froggy's judgment. Can we end on that? This isn't sure if she had any. I don't know a single thing you said. I don't know either. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about you in prime time. You finally got the wrestling wrestling, you know? Me and Ant was an interesting thing. Because um, at that time, I came to IWC a couple times. But it was when they were in the graveyard. It wasn't necessarily when Ant was running things. So when I showed up to wrestle Ant, I literally, and I've talked to Ant. He knows this. He knows my feelings. I know his feelings. Ant legitimately hated my fucking guts when I first showed up to IWC. Really? Oh, he fucking hated me and I hated him. Because um, I showed up and I was like, yeah, I'm, well. I'm the GBYWN champion. I have to show up strong. I have to make a strong impact. And Andrew and Ben are my friends. So they know that the pull that I have to need to be able to keep the title strong. But at the same time, was trying to keep IWC, which is now 3OW, uh, BYW um, wrestling strong. He wanted to keep it rebel relevant. He wanted to keep it, you know, strong, not weak as shit. So I showed up and in kayfabe bought TV time to cut a promo. Mm -hmm. And as a golden boy of IWC, cut me off. Perfect 
fucking storyline. Perfect. I am the over arrogant world champion of overall treating the Fed like shit. Ant is the golden boy of the Fed. Sorry. Defending the Fed. Being like, who the fuck is you for stepping all over everything we've sacrificed for over all the year, these years to get marginally accepted for you to step all over all of it? And honestly, I think at the start, there was real heat before me and Ant. Between me and Ant. Like, I think Ant really thought that I was trying to be big league. I think Ant hated my fucking guts. He thought I wanted to go over for the sake of IWC wasn't important and I need to go over because the GBO IWN is more important than IWC. Which in theory is the truth. But Ant and most of IWC is very good and very crucial to the international or interstitial community of the GBO IWN. And my whole point of that feud was to act like I was bigger and better than the entire Fed, but have the golden boy of the Fed come this close to taking the most important title in the entire G global community that it would prove that IWC was worthy of challenging anyone and everyone in the community. And that's what we got across. Ant came this close to beating me. I tapped out a split second after I got the three count on Ant. And then when we revisited, revisited that feud in New Era, I tapped out. I gave him that rub to prove to him that IWC deserved that spot. And I know Ant didn't love me at the, at the start. Oh. I know that Anthony loves me now. Oh, Primetime. Yeah, Primetime knows what I was doing now. So I'm glad of that. And we're worried. only up to what, like, I'm dragging this out so long. We're up to like, what, 2012 now? Yeah, uh, we're at 2013. We're, we're, we're ranking our, our uh, we're making our way over to the goodbye event of 2013. Okay. Is there anything in between that time you want to mention? Um, uh, well, when New Era 2013 came around, I remember, um, New York Comic Con in 2012. I I was always doing New York Comic Con because of my old job. I was doing previews and reviews of video old games. Old job account. Yep. And Don and um, Paul. Don and Froggy wanted to do a Comic Con event in the city. So I told them I've been doing it enough. Come join me. You'll have fun. I'll show you what my life is, as shitty as my normal life is. I will show you my con life is pretty fucking amazing. Um, so, Froggy showed up inside the hand with his con friends. Don showed up, and I showed him my fucking nightlife, which is amazing. And it's few and far between. I wish fucking Don could experience that more often. But, pretty much that's three or four times a fucking year, which is why I'm glad I'm where I'm at now. Um, but... I remember Froggy was doing shot of photo shoots for cosplay of some of his friends in NYE. So me and Don went to Dave and Buster's where there was an IGN meet and greet. And after the IGN meet and greet was over, we decided to have a dinner. And Don brought up to me the concept of NYE happening for the full year of 2013. Mm -hmm. At that point, I was so burnt out after being GYWN champ, because not a lot of people know this. Um, maybe from the 15 Beer Murph, you know, rumor people know this, but people who nope. don't know the 15 Beer Murph rumor, I am fucking so guilty. I feel so guilty about putting myself over other people that when I lost the championship, I was so looking forward to just jobbing people who needed to be in the spotlight more than me 
like Ben and Ant and people like that, that I was looking forward to just jobbing for the next year and then just disappearing into obscurity. And then Don brought up to me NYE, New Era Revival for 2013 and NYE 3. And I was like, you know what, if it's once a month, I'm in. I'll do it. Because I love you, and I can do once a month. Tell them kisses around. Mm -hmm. So what happened? I showed up once a month. I jumped at Froggy, which I felt like I deserved. Uh, I mean, Dan, Russ, and say what you will about my reign. I feel like my reign in comparison to Froggy was in, like not as superior. So I felt like I deserved to job to Froggy. Even that meant take two, taking two concussion level punts to the head. From you mean the heavyweight shit? Hmm? Are you talking about the heavyweight belt? Yeah. I agree. Like, in this, I know, like, not, um, and it's more of psychology wise agreeing to what you were already getting at. I feel you. You know, like, I get where you're going at with that. Like, um, There's nothing wrong with making an extended reign mean something. Mm -hmm. But I feel like... Froggy was more of a fighting champion than I was. <sighs> Bucking wise, sure. Uh, I, I feel more of a... If you put in the same situation that Froggy was, you'd be a lot more open to him. Uh, there's some times where I definitely hear a froggy go, mm, I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I think you would be way more open to it because you are like me. You bump shit like a motherfucker and uh, if you're put against it, like, well, I mean, like, like you said, you, you had DeMorris on your side. Like, that was your guardian angel, like. <laughs> Mine was Martell. Uh, mm -hmm. Doesn't turn out so well the same way. But, um, like, seriously, like, you've legitimately been the measuring stick, if you will, for me. So, when it comes to selling for other people, you've never had a problem with that, ever. Like, you're a fucking bum bunky. That, that's what you do. Like, I'm a heel. I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to be able to be the biggest douchebag that makes you hate me yep. the most out of anybody in the yard. And when I get my ass kicked, I have to make it believable that I am getting my ass kicked thoroughly and handedly, especially against a top face. Which is why I decided to get my ass utterly handed to me by DeMorris. And when Matt was like, I'm gonna fucking you in the head. And you're gonna, and I'm an opinion. I'm like, no, I should kick out, and you should make me and Dan at the same time tap, because if you're gonna be the undisputed champion, like you shouldn't just knock me out. You should make me and Dan at the same time tap out to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that we have both submitted to the fact that you are a champion. And that you were better than both of us. Mm. I mean, Dan, I don't know if you agree, but psychology-wise, that just makes sense to me. Both heels should tap and admit to the fact, physically, on camera, that you were better than both of us. So that way there is not a shadow of a doubt that neither one of us could challenge you at all that you are the champion. I remember, I remember even talking to DeMorris about it. He wanted to change it numerous times, and every time I told him, no, we should do the double submission. Mm -hmm. so. I, love, I love Matt to death. Like, Ian and Don can talk at length about how much I love Matt, but, like, that's the only thing that made sense to me, because, like, if, I, if he need me in the head, and, like, that was the finish for the both of us, like, you could admit... That, like, you didn't get kneed in the head, so you could have a claim to the title. 
Or if I kicked out and you pinned him, then I had a claim to the title. Like, it made sense if he had us both in the same submission and we both tapped, tapped out. Neither one of us would have had legitimate claims to the title. He would have legitimately been the number one contender. I mean, it just made sense, sense to me. I mean, maybe I'm just too old school, but that just made sense to me. All right, so let's talk about goodbye. Dude, goodbye, 2013. Goodbye, 2013, which is practically my goodbye to wrestling. I didn't intend for it to be my goodbye to wrestling, but it's just the way that life turns out. I really wanted to keep going beyond 2013, but I knew that I was getting older. I was more susceptible to injury. People were blah, stepping blah, out blah, more. Blah, you said work at fucking WWE. Stop it. That's what I'm getting to. I know, but motherfucking stop it. Pretend like you no, to overput the fact that you're getting too old before, for it. Before I knew that I would got the job at, you know, up north. You felt it. If you watch me, like, I left it in on purpose. Yes. If you watch my music video, if you have the link on the epicenter, because I've blocked it from general viewership. If you follow the epicenter and follow the link, you'll see I shake hands with Johnny, with John, which I have always had respect for John. I have always wanted to work John. From the moment I saw him from his beginnings at BXW, I knew John was going to be something. Granted, I, I've listened to your podcast with him and I know his health problems. I always knew John had that ability to be something more. And John, I know that you have been able to go above and beyond. And that's why I chose you and was so happy when you, Dan, gave me the opportunity of wrestling in the singles because I know Dan can go or that John can go. And, you know, I know he can go to the next level. I know he's the next next evolution of backyard wrestling and I'm so glad that I was able to have that match with him that we that it was somebody who I could go with and going into goodbye I didn't fully 100% know but I pretty much 90 95% knew this was it for me and if you look at my match with Pete I go so hard with Pete I know Pete can go just innovative as shit with anything, regardless of whoever he works. He can turn anything into everything. Are you talking about vengeance? Yes. Yep. He is, without a doubt, if anybody's going to dethrone Sam Jude, my vote goes to him for taking the title from Sam Jude for the for the championship to bring it back to the States. Pete is one of the most wonderful, intelligent people that I know. And you can tell if the reason why I left out my reaction at the end of the music video between the two of us, if you look at my face, that was the last match I've ever had. I'm content with that. I am forever happy with my last match last matches being with Pete and with Johnny Boy at Goodbye 2013. I left it all in the ring. I passed on the torch to the two of them. And I proved to whoever doubted me that I can actually go. I know there are people throughout my reign as GBYW champion for my reign as JWA champion that, oh, he's Murph. He can put on good big car matches and he can't go. I'm pretty sure with those two fucking matches that I proved that I can fucking go. And that's all I wanted to do. 
I mean, like, I know with my title reign, like, Dan, I loved, I loved you, me, and Demars. I really liked what we did. It was a main event quality match, but my entire reign as champion, if it wasn't a match of the year candidate, I was disappointed about myself. And like, I'm sorry if that insults Demorest. I'm sorry if that insults you. But after what Froggy did, I felt like if I wasn't match the year candidate, I wasn't matching what he did or exceeding what he did. And I needed to match or exceed what he did. To bring to to legitimacy to. to that championship. Not enough people try to bring legitimacy to the championships. And this hobby. And I wanted to be able to do that and accentuate that. I loved the triple threat match that we had. It was main event quality. We worked well together. We accentuated each other. But... Unfortunately, in my honest opinion, it wasn't actually your candidate. Which I'm sure you'll agree with. Because there's shit, like, each of the three of us fucked up on. And it was a good main event, main event match. But it wasn't a match to your candidate. And every time I went out and it wasn't a match to your candidate, I felt upset with myself. That's why... As much as people may be like, Murph, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with you. Why are you so upset? You were the longest reigning g Waterman champion. I'll be like, yeah, it was, but, you know, I, I could have done more. I should have fucking killed myself. No. For every match that I had. No. I should have given more. No. I should have been nope. flat out match of the year candidate every single time. Because that is what that now. title deserves. No, that's you speaking now from the perspective of you're not being able to wrestle anymore, quote unquote. You're trying to delegitimize what you already did. Stop. There's no point in doing that. Because, uh, to be honest, it's, it was good storytelling, but at the same time, you can't fucking sit there and try to, like, you can't, you try and discredit yourself with, at the same time, like, putting yourself over. You can't do that. Like, be happy with what you did. If that makes any sense. Like, it sounds like fucked up ramblings, but at the same time, it's like, truly, like, uh, <laughs> There's got to be a reason why we're fucking still here at four in the goddamn morning. Wow. I'm sorry. Oh, no. This poor motherfucker is tired as shit. We're drunk, at least. Mm -hmm. But you know what I mean? Like, this poor motherfucker is still awake. Somehow. But it doesn't discredit what you did. You know what I mean? Like, I just didn't know there was... Oh, I knew there was some history to you. But, like... The whole Troyano thing and the O'Hara brothers. It's fair, dude, but don't sell yourself short ever. Ever. Stupid. It's a dumb concept. Because although you think you didn't make it that far or whatever and shit like that, but like and people who pay attention and shit like that, it means a lot. It really does. And there's no reason for you to sell yourself short for any horseshit in general. Like, it's stupid. Kind of goes in the whole mentality of saying no. And it's funny because you never really learned how to do that. Like, you never, I wouldn't say that you never said no, but at the same time, it's like, you try to put as many ideas over as possible. 
between lower New York side and so on and so forth between you and your brother. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're in the final stretch. Let's talk about 2014, what we've uh, had happen up until this point, and uh, maybe some final words going into the future. Well, most people know what, you know, fate has done for me in 2014. Indeed. I'm a, in a very fortuitous position that I don't want to risk my future for. Say what? But at the same time... Uh, I love what I did. I love what I've contributed. And I've always been of the mind for people who quote-unquote retire to never say never. Like, right now, I, I can't. I, I just can't. But who knows what I will do in the future? Right. Who knows what will happen to me? So, as much as I want to say I'm done, you won't. I, 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 I can't, because who yeah. knows what's going to happen to me Same. in I the future. You. Who knows what's going to happen. But, I mean, if you want me to, to leave with some closing words, I just... I hope that I've influenced people on, you know, what wrestling is beyond just doing moves to get a pop. Did you just fucking say beyond? I, I hope people have understand understood what it means to encompass and envelop what a character is and what the psychology around that character means and the structure of a match for that character means. And that people know the limitations of that character and take that beyond into like you know, out of fed acclaim. I feel like I've done a good job of expanding uh, outer fed hatred towards myself. And, you know, I feel like I've done a good job of making people hate me, which is what I've tried to do. And I feel like I hope enough people have, outside of that kayfabe hate, have liked me enough for what I've done. I hope I've left a good enough stamp on BYW. And Fair I enough. Hope, I hope enough people have acknowledged what I've done. I know a lot of people like to pretend or act like they don't care what their footprint is on this hobby, but, you know, I care. I hope people learn from what I've done. I mean, if, if my employer finds out and I get fired. Mm. You know, oh well. I highly doubt it'll be an issue. I doubt it'll be an issue, but I'm, I'm glad that I've experienced what I've experienced. And I hope that people learn from me. And that people look, if people look at what I've done, I don't hope people look at and be like, whoa, I should be just like Murph. I, should, I, I hope people are like, whoa, Murph did some good shit. How can I take what Murph did good shit. and improve on that and make it better? How can I take what Murph did and encompass it with what Russ did and encompass it with what Brad Hazard did and Ant did, Primetime did, and Danny Devine did, and Patrick Way Wilson did, and Marcus Sinafonte did? How can I mesh all of that together into a new thing? I hope that's what people take away from that. What the fuck are we in the same goddamn class? That's what I hope. I want to inspire people to learn that you can't, you shouldn't be the carbon copy mold of what everybody in backyard wrestling is. You need to find your own identity, find your own niche, be careful, be comfortable with who you are, 
and just find your own identity, your own way to get over, and make it work for yourself. That's what I did with hard work and a little bit of luck. That's what I did. And I hope that other people are willing to do the same thing. Don't fall into the formula of accepting the fact that you're always going to be a mid-carter. Continue to work to be a main eventer. If the people in your fed don't think you're a main eventer, go to super shows. Prove you're better than main eventers in your fed. You'll get noticed. Keep working. Don't take it to extremes of or suicide or homicide or some stupid shit like that that I once thought. But work your ass off. Learn your craft. Know what you can do, what you can't do. Acknowledge the strengths of yourself and the weaknesses of yourself and learn how it can complement the weaknesses and strengths of your opponent and make it work. Because that's what wrestling is mostly all about. And I hope that's what people take from my story. Is It's somebody who knew what he was good at and what he was bad at and learned how to adapt to certain situations. Alright, well, I certainly appreciate the time you've taken in order to tell us your story. I'm sure many people will be listening, and if they haven't been inspired already, they probably will be now, I gotta say. <laughs> That's a lot to take in, a lot to think about. And, uh, you know, there, there you have it. As much as he talked about other champions and other GBYW and wrestlers, at the end of the day, there is only one Murph. There's Murphisms. There's things Murph did that only Murph does. And there will always there's the Murphonology that only Murph will have, and anything else is just Murph-like. Mm -hmm. So, once again, I thank you for your time, and I hope. Uh, I don't, well, I know the future is very bright for you. So, thank you for your time. Thank you, Rad, for letting me. Uh dispute my bullshit on your podcast for probably two or three episodes or if not more you're welcome <laughs> and there you have it folks so long in the making now you've heard it all all has been revealed to you from the longest reigning GBYWN champion of all time Murph and what a great interview. And up next, folks, in the coming weeks, in the coming episodes, I'll tell you now. We go from one former champion to another former champion. The man that took our world title international. I'm talking about the one and the only. Yes, that's right, folks. In the next edition of the podcast, you'll be hearing an interview from none other than Sam Jude. Yes, Sam Jude sat down with me during BXW Goodbye this year, and we had a hell of an interview. A hell of an interview! And you'll hear all of the juicy details that I can let you listen to on the podcast next time. But in the meantime, folks, please enjoy the sounds of Backyard Wrestling. And as always, for myself, Rad Hazard, I will see you next time here on The Global Backyard Wrestling Nation Podcast. Hi, my name is John Bose. I am uh, 26 years old from Clark, New Jersey. In 2002, I was hanging out with a group of friends, and I've been a wrestling fan my entire life. And pretty much, we were just like, you know, let's do this. Like, we see what they do on TV, and it's just like, you know, we were at that age. I was 14 years old. And I was just like, you know what, if they could do it, we could do it too. So, you know, we started out, as most people would start out, mattresses in the backyard, twine ropes, you know, sticks as the posts, and, you know, kind of, kind of really took it from there. That's when I started going to wrestling training. As soon as I got the character, it was kind of like, you know what, this is a real thing now. This isn't just messing around with, with my friends anymore. Like, this is the real deal. So I wanted to fit the part and I wanted to know what I was doing as opposed to potentially hurting myself or somebody else in the ring. Uh, 
Well, when I was younger, I was really into wrestling, you know. And uh, I tried to find different areas around my area to see if kids were doing the same thing I was doing. So I come across this, uh, this website called the Global Backyard Wrestling Nation, and they just had a complete list of searches of different people from around the state, which really surprised me. So I found the closest one, which was Allentown, you know, talked to the head guy, and went up, did a show, and been doing it ever since. The first thing that pops into mind is that we're unsafe. You know, we're not professionally trained because we wrestle in a backyard, but that's just not the case at all. I mean, they just don't give us the time of day to actually watch what we're doing and how we're doing and how we plan our stuff out and, you know, just the whole concept that we know what we're doing. It's just that we're not in a big building with a bunch of people. I usually compare backyard wrestling and pro wrestling to parkour and gymnastics. Because parkour is like a like the redheaded step stop drowned in gymnastics. And it's like the same thing, except parkour isn't frowned upon as much as backyard wrestling, and backyard wrestling shouldn't be frowned upon that much. It's very unsafe. Um, obviously a lot of people believe that you're untrained. When a lot of people started thinking about backyard wrestling, they thought, alright, these kids are mimicking ECW, which was all pretty much the majority of it was steel chairs to the head, barbed wire baseball bats. Professional wrestling is all prostitution. Wrestlers have hoard themselves into extinction, so now all that it is is somebody somewhere opens a training school and they want you to pay your hard-earned money to learn and then you're not ready until they say you're ready. We have no idea what we're doing. Untrained, uh, all blood and guts and death matches and stuff like that, which isn't true at all. Backyard wrestling to me is about a group of guys who share a common passion and get together from all over the place. We do it in a safe manner. We don't do it to the point where we try to get hurt, like the old 1990s backyard wrestling. It's a whole different game. Like 90% of these guys have actually gotten uh, pro training in some way, shape, or form. And everyone else that wrestles with us, we train them in that style. So it's a very professional backyard wrestling. I'd say backyard wrestling keeps me sane, though. I get to see all my friends all the time, and. We get to hang out, and it's just nice to be able to get away. and be, I can be somebody else if I want to. Mike Kunkel can go away on the weekends if I wanted to, and I get to be Mike Damage, and he's just a crazy guy that goes nuts and hits people hard and stuff, so that's cool. So I made friends with people who live in, well, used to live in Las Vegas, people who live in Kentucky, upstate New York. Like, I could go to half this country, and if I was in a bind, I, I could find friends that would help me out or give me a place to stay. It's a, it's, it's a brotherhood. I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars on backyard wrestling out of like the 17 years I've had. <coughs> out of all the money that I've spent, I would never trade a single second or a moment for it. I've traveled all over. I've met the greatest guys and they like, honestly, I could call them like my second family. If I'm out there, I need a place to stay. They got my back. I got their back when they're here. It's, it's an amazing atmosphere that you can't get anywhere else. When I get at backyard wrestling, I guess it's just friendship. You know, uh, we're all really close to each other. Like, there's a dude sleeping on the floor right now. I'm just talking, and he doesn't even care. Like we're all really close, and um, you can do whatever you want. You can go out there, you can have fun. You can do whatever crazy stuff you can come up with. It's not gonna be anyone there to judge you and tell you it's stupid. And yeah, I, I just love it, man. They say in college you meet the best the people that are you're gonna be friends with for the rest of your life. And I went to college, made a lot of good friends. But the people that I, I think that I'm going to be in contact with for the rest of my life are some of the people that I've met for the rest. My name's Jeff Layton. My uh, backyard wrestling name is Ryan Ragnarok. My name is Jordan Young. I go as Adam Bull Burnett. My name is Mike Kunkel. My ring name is Mike Damage. My name is Donovan Valley. Uh, I wrestle as Marcus Cintafonte. My name's Sam George. My ring name is Sam George. My name is Matthew Allen. My wrestling name is Matt Morris, and I'm a backyard wrestler. I'm a backyard wrestler. And 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 I'm a backyard wrestler. I'm a backyard wrestler.